what has worked for you? Maybe it's not advice that you would say this is the way that you do writing, but what are some things that have worked for you in particular? Because I know you, you've said in the past that you have a, some sort of a rolling average of number of words that you'll write per week or you'll, you'll uh, anything environment related or creative re- related things that are staples for you that you think this this has helped me and if I get away from this it might not be such a good thing well in the end it always comes down to this like writing it is like anything else it's you know five percent inspiration 95 percent perspiration right it's just you've got to it's work you know it's one thing to think up an idea for a sequence of plot events for a book it's another thing to write them and so for me all of my challenges revolve around just motivating my lazy ass to do the work because i am a really lazy person when you get down to it super Mm -hmm. freaking lazy i mean if there was a you know if there was a global competition for world's laziest person i wouldn't bother to go too much work (laughs) you know so it's like (laughs) yeah um and and so for me it's really all about motivating myself so the the words per day when i'm working on a first draft i try to get a thousand words a day done that's a thousand words per weekday so you know i and the way i actually do it is i say five thousand words a week is what i'm shooting for and I'm, I have to have a, at least 1,000 done by the end of Monday, at least 2,000 done by the end of Tuesday, 3,000 by Wednesday, and so on. So that means, and that's carefully constructed so that if I'm kind of on a roll on like Tuesday, I don't, yeah. I don't have any reason to stop. You know, I don't want to go like, ooh, I made 1,000 words I, I, mm-hmm. and I'm on a roll, so I want to save this for Wednesday. No, it's just like I'm now working on Wednesday's quota you know, by, yeah. by having succeeded on this. So it encourages me if I'm, if I'm doing well to just to press on. Yeah. Um, I like that. So, so it's more of a, it's like a flex. You don't, you don't have to write a thousand words a day. You, if you write 3000 on Monday, you say, okay, the next three days I have to write 2000 so I can go on a hike or play video games well, one of those days. Or, yeah. you know, well, not that, also, not that that's what I you want to do. Right, but I also don't always succeed. You know, I mean, it's self, it, it, one of the worst. One, one of the worst aspects to being your own boss is that uh, sometimes your boss is really lenient. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, I mean, I don't is. always succeed. I won't lie. But another thing I do is I make a bunch of rules for myself, and these are again self-inflicted. Where I say, until I've made my words, you know, until I've reached my quota for that day. I have a list of things that I'm not allowed to do. Um, I'm not allowed to do woodworking, which is my hobby. It's it's uh, woodworking. My, uh, yeah, woodworking. Uh, you know, like making furniture and stuff like that. I also like to make uh, clocks, clockwork stuff. Mess around with clock mechanisms. Uh, I'm not allowed to do any of that. Not allowed to watch any form of video entertainment. Not YouTube. Not streaming. Not TV. Nothing like that. Uh, I'm not allowed to game. Um, I'm not a video gamer myself, but I'm a big time board gamer. So I love to board game with my friends and stuff like that. Um, not allowed to do that till I've made my words and so on. Um, that's when I'm working on a first draft of things. All those rules go out the window when I'm in editing mode. Um, what, what, is, what do your rules look like more when you're in editing mode? Why does it change? Um, I don't really have rules when I'm in editing mode because I'm pretty good at keeping my motivation up when I'm doing editing because uh, it's a lot more fun to paint a house than it is to build a house, you Mm -hmm. know? And so it's actually, I don't have any problem um, keeping up the motivation when I'm doing edits Do you for some reason. See, I, uh, it's, it could be because the, the format is different, but when I'm, editing audio I cringe when I oh listen god yeah no that's, myself. I, that's I'm totally like, different. I can't even do like I have to almost detach from I feel like I have a split personality because I have to tell myself and this isn't me I'm listening to some other piece of shit blah blah <laughs> on on a, on a podcast and well, everybody hates their own voice so I mean yeah so you don't you feel that when life. you're reading you yeah. don't feel that when you're doing your own writing. If, if you're reading no. something you don't like, you don't get like that cringy feeling. Oh yeah, or something. no, you bet your ass I do. If I'm reading something I don't like, I get that cringe, and then I'm like, I don't like that. That the cringe that must now change. Yeah. You know, but I don't have the um, the weird thing that hey, everybody seems to have. Uh, it, well, sorry, everybody hates their own voice. So 
editing your own voice, I can see why that would be really rough. But um, it doesn't work that way for your own written word. Um, I put myself in the mindset of a reader. I'm, I like pretend not to know this, pretend not to know that, try to experience the emotions the reader would experience while while you know while reading the content try to figure out where it's starting to get boring or sag and say like okay how can i tighten that up and so on some kind of role playing being a reader